biggest duel in the deserts in recent memory. Well, it lived up to all those expectations. We had the last second drama, the thrill, the the intensity, the excitement, all that came together here at Wells Fargo Arena in Tempe. There was drama, there was excitement, and physical play, a hostile crowd, all you could ask for in a rivalry game, and ultimately the Sun Devils came home with the victory, giving the Sun Devils a season sweep for the second consecutive year. I mean, Herb's got his guys playing awful well, and they've they've made uh, great strides in the last two to three years, and and uh, I. That, it's, to me, now it's a rivalry. Uh, you know, I know Arizona State would like to say it's always been, but really it hasn't, not until the last couple of years. No, that's the best atmosphere I've ever been in, in Wells Fargo. Um, and, uh, I've been, been in here a few times, but far and away from the opening tip, I mean, I could hear it from the locker room before the game started. They were at a fevered pitch, and it was a good crowd. And, and we had some fans that were pretty noisy, too, when we kind of made a little run, but it was, it was a great environment, great college environment. We wondered whether that long gap of time would be either hurt or help the Wildcats where, you know, they've had their big three, Chase Buttinger, Nick Wise, and Jordan Hill play consistently 40 minutes a game, weekend after weekend, and really that took a toll on their bodies physically. But would that long period of time have an effect, make, maybe even make the Wildcats stale coming out? And you know what? It really showed that in the first half, the Wildcats failed to rotate quick enough defensively, and that led up to many three-pointers hit by ASU, 10 of 16 from beyond the arc, giving them a lead as big as a double-digit lead heading into halftime. The Sun Devils particularly moved the ball well in the first half. Of their 14 field goals, 12 of them came off an assist. But just like we've come to expect all season, and you know what, it's really been expectation that the Wildcats have really had these second half surges, and you know what, tonight was no exception. They went on a huge 23 to 4 tear in the second half, cutting a 17 point deficit all the way down to zero. They actually even took the lead by two uh, at one point. But it was those daunting memories of earlier this season that came back where the Wildcats could not close out down the stretch when it mattered, couldn't close out on the road, and it, it amounted to another loss. We had a tough time guarding the baseline runner that they had. Um, but I think you know, towards the second half, the second stretch of the second half, um, I thought we did a good job that. We, we fought back from uh, 17 down in the second half and went up two. So I'm just proud of my guys for fighting back. And you know, there's a couple of plays we could have made down the stretch, but it didn't go our way. Yeah, we have to build on this. I mean, I mean, it, it, we're disappointed. Yeah, we wanted to win, but the biggest thing is we we've got a quick turnaround. We got to play Washington State, who obviously is pretty darn good.